Hello and welcome to Chair Interval Training brought to you by Community Access Yellow Springs and the Yellow Springs Senior Center and me, Lynn Hardman, American Council on Exercise Senior Specialist. That's kind of a new thing for me. And Silver Sneakers Flex Instructor. But you don't need to have silver sneakers or know anything other than how you feel today. And the goal of this ongoing class is to make your movements easier. So please consult your physician before you begin any new exercise program and listen to your body. Go at your own pace. If anything hurts, don't do it. You can always modify, reduce the range of motion, or substitute a movement that did feel good to you. And you can always rest. You will need a good attitude and a sturdy chair. If you have a seven to 10 inch diameter rubber ball, that'd be great as well. And a rubber tubing or rubber band. And let's see, that's pretty much everything you need to know. So let's move. This show will be airing uh, the first week, full week of May, which also is Cinco de Mayo. So I'm going to use some Latin music. Hopefully you enjoy it. I always do. So make sure your area is free and clear of anything you might slip, trip, or fall on. Let me restart that for us to make sure I have done it the right way. All right. Whether you're seated in your sturdy chair or on your sturdy feet, use your best posture. Stacking ears over shoulders over hips aligns our spine for better, easier movement. And that is our goal. As well as to strengthen our skeletal muscles, heart and lungs, and improve on our ABCs. That is agility, balance, coordination, strength, and we'll end up with some flexibility and even some relaxation. There's never enough time for that though. So I encourage you to do your homework every day. Just move about 10 minutes and save time for a couple five or 10 minute chunks where you could just breathe and relax. Okay. So you get a breathing. It's best to breathe in through your nose, like you're smelling your favorite flowers in May, and exhale, as if you're blowing the dandelion fluff off. Okay, so marching, or just tapping your toes if you're in your chair. Let's widen out our stance a bit. Now I need you always to be close enough to touch your chair for a balance check. You could be behind your sturdy chair with your wide stance march, or you could be beside it. I'm gonna step in front just for a minute so you can see my feet better. So marching out wide, just push right and left. Sink down into your hips and knees and ankles a little, and maybe flex your biceps. Show me your muscles. Hey, no, I was away for about 10 days and um, I saw some family members I hadn't seen in a long time, including my mom out in California. So you might have seen two shows in a row that were the same. Hopefully you hung in there waiting for fresh exercises. How about you lift that shoulder toward the ear? See how that feels? Maybe roll it back. It's very important to warm up for any vigorous activity, including gardening, which is a vigorous activity. Intentionally moving in different ways helps as well while you're doing a physical task like gardening. So opening and closing your chest, see how that feels? Ah, now maybe reaching across the body, pulling the navel in, keeping those ears right on top of the shoulders, rotating gently through your spine. If it feels good, you can go slow. 
but please don't go herky jerky. Okay, excellent. Now let's march our feet together. And I'm gonna move over to the side to demonstrate a pattern to you that we will be doing during our one of our cardiovascular or cardiorespiratory intervals. Interval training is really an efficient way to get a better, efficient training session both for your heart and lungs and your skeletal muscles strength and endurance. And all the while, while you're doing all those intervals, you're strengthening your brain, your cognitive abilities are enhanced through regular exercise, especially patterns. So pay attention. We're going to be marching on that right foot. Right, right, right. Right, we can touch the chair with our left hand if we need it for a balance check. We can see it with our peripheral vision. And our posture is upright, whether we're seated or standing. Okay, we're gonna do a rock step forward. Rock, forward and together. Forward and together. Now we're gonna take it to the side. Four. Three, we're marching, so lift your feet off the floor each time. Now, back, four, back and together. Two more times. Side, four, we've done this before. Good, now how about two times to the front, and two to the side. Times. Excellent. And side. We can break that down. One in front. Side. Back. Side. And we can go faster. Front together. Side together. Back together. Side together. Front together. But we're just warming up. So let's take it back to our easy march. So that's a rock step pattern that we'll use at different speeds. And we might even use a touching pattern, same directions. If it were a clock, we could take that right foot and tap on the number 12, tap on the number three, tap back on six, tap back on three, and so, so on and so forth, okay? So that's one pattern. Another pattern we'll use, and again, you need to be near your chair ideally behind it for this one. But again, I'm gonna come out so you can see my feet. Another pattern we'll do is to step out to the right and then march two, three. Step out to the left into a mini squat. And this pattern, we'll call it cha-cha-cha. Out and down, cha-cha-cha. Or mini squat, keep your body and weight centered if you can on both feet. So it's not a touch, it's a step. We're putting our weight there. We can go slow, or we can go at tempo to the right. One, two, three, or cha-cha-cha. We can go at tempo, or we can get rid of the cha-cha-cha and go faster. Step, step, not a touch, mind you. Step, step. And that is our cha-cha-cha pattern. Marching it out. We can, and we will, take it in other directions, like forward and back, and even crossing behind. However, it is time to finish off our warm up with a little dynamic stretch. So get your feet really close to your chair so that you know it's there for you as you hinge your hips back. Keep your head up and get seated at your own pace. If you want, you can test the squatting waters and go down and up a few times. If you want, you can just settle in and get comfy somewhere near the front edge of your seat. Now, as we move on, a couple of reminders. I'll be cueing you often about water. And the best way to get things down low is to step to the side, lean to the side, brace with your abdominals and one arm on your leg before you get a sip of water. It's best to do that while you're seated. Another thing I'll be cueing you 
walked in about as you sit tall in your seat and stretch your legs out, right and left, is exertion or intensity. So sitting tall, stretching your opposite arm out with your leg. Think of a scale, one being lowest intensity and 10 being maximal. And we're gonna shoot for a target zone of four to seven, maybe as high as eight. See how it feels to stretch your foot in the air, toes and fingers pointing up towards the ceiling. So we're shooting for that target zone, particularly when we're doing our cardiovascular patterns, like the cha-cha-cha and the rock step. Okay? We're going slow enough. Let's limber up that right foot ankle with a flex point, flex point. Now let's try the left. Flex point, flex point. Now let's try the right and circle opposite directions with your ankle and your wrist. Switch it. Oh, I'm feeling that in my quadricep. <laughs> Left leg circles opposite arm and ankle. A little of our coordination. And then switch it. Hopefully you pick that up. It's a little bit hard on the screen, I know. All right. Extend that right leg. Perch right at the front edge of your seat. Support here and inhale up. If it hurts the shoulder to extend, shorten it. But keep the back long and strong. And keep your chin up and your eyes forward. And I mean that figuratively and literally. Lift those toes and fingers and then push the sole to the ground. Pull the navel in as you lean back to support your spine. Drawing knee closer to chest. Circle the ankle again if you like. And other way. Excellent. And then let's stretch out that left leg. Focusing on the hamstring and the calf, just getting it ready. Inhaling, lengthening the spine, keeping it long and straight. Hinging forward only about halfway toward our lap. Lifting the toes and fingers to develop that stretch. And then pushing down, sort of limber up the front of the ankle. Sit tall. Pull the navel in. These preparatory beginning stretches are simply getting ready for more movement. Limbering, if you would. Other direction with your ankle circles. The stretches we do at the end when our muscles and tendons and ligaments are super warm and a little more elastic are actually immediately effective to restore the length and, and um, help ease or transition to a lower level of intensity on purpose. Okay, let's take a deep breath. Inhaling through the nose, opening the chest, opening the spine, feels good, slight arch. Exhale, going at your own pace, interlacing your fingers and arching your back. Excellent, lift up. And if it feels good, stretch to one side. And then up again. On the other side. Again, if the shoulders ache, you could shorten it, but still stretch through those side oblique torso muscles and some stabilizing muscles along the spine. All right, whether you're going to stay, remain in your chair, or be on your feet, we're going to do that cha-cha-cha uh, pattern, okay? Let's see if it works here. Those of you who know you want to stand, take your time, gather yourself, and come in behind your chair, please. I want to show those of you who choose to sit, sit how you can do it in the chair. Of course, you need to be right at the edge of your seat because it's so thrilling to be here virtually with you and step out to the side. Wait, let's do it slow and one, two, three, and then left and one, two, three. If you're standing up, you're behind your chair and you're sinking into your mini squat with your weight equal in both feet. If you're sitting in your chair, you're doing the same. Really dig your heels in and all 10 toes. Excellent. Okay, I'm gonna transition to my feet. I just wanted to show you that you have a great place to move in your chair or in the air if you choose. So keep on squatting to your right 
and step two, three, to your left, and step two, three, right, and let's try, maybe one more time slow, right and left, and then we're going to go up to tempo, ready, here we go, step, and one, two, three, you can pop those arms if you like, or you can keep them on your chair, it's up to you, but sink a little into that squat, and if it feels good, you can come up to your tippy toes on the cha-cha-cha. Let's add some flair, if you want, with a scoop to the right, scoop, scoop. You can keep that other hand on your chair if you like. Ole! <laughs> hey, another way to gauge our intensity to make sure we're working at an appropriate level is the talk test. So let me hear you say, ole! Ole! <laughs> Excelente! Okay. Let's try that four more times. Four. Three. Then we're gonna get rid of the arms. Two. And keep the legs moving. One. So there we go. At tempo. We're gonna think about this first and then we're gonna do it. We're gonna get rid of those one, two, three, or cha-cha-cha steps so that we can do that step side to side faster. Are you ready? Set, go. Step right, step left. Don't tap. Get down with it. How are you doing? It's good to be home. It's great to travel and see folks, but man, it's good to be home. You can ski with that, or you can add that scoop again. That adds some more cardio demand bigger arm movements. You can do both arms if you don't need that chair balance check. But more arm movements means a little bit more work for the heart, particularly when your arms are overhead. So you can pull a non-jumping jack. Just four more. Four more. Dos. Uno. March it out. Excellent. How are you doing on our perceived exertion scale? As we move over to the right side, if you need to take a rest, you know you best. Go ahead, have a seat. And if you're continuing on, come on over here to the right side. Clear space. We're going to take our right foot forward and then chop, chop, chop. Left foot back. Chop, chop, chop. Again. As you step forward, sink a little into your lunge stance, if, if it feels good. So this is a different direction with a pattern. How you doing? Good. Are you ready? Set, let's take it a little bit faster in tempo. Forward, cha-cha-cha. Back, cha-cha-cha. Right, cha-cha-cha. Left. Feels good to move, I hope. Remember, if it doesn't, you can make it smaller. Or you can just go to a march, or you can have a rest in your chair and then do as much as you can at your own comfort level, at your own pace, when you're ready. Some days are better than others, yeah? We have to be careful not to do too much on those great days. Okay. Let's say push, push, push when you step forward, push when you go back, push. If you need one hand on the chair, there you go. Excellent. Now let's push forward as we step forward and up as we push back, if it feels good. Forward and up. Now let's see if we can keep these arms when it's time to go a little bit faster, not yet, but ready, set, step forward, back, forward, back, forward. You can keep 
one hand on your chair if you like. Forward, back. Oh, this is good. How are you doing? Four more. Three, two, one. March it out. How are you doing on our scale of one to 10 now? Can you talk? A few words at least? Let's come back behind our chair. We're gonna take that side to side salsa. I'm sorry, cha-cha-cha. And we're gonna make it a little bit more diagonal. So behind your chair is where you need to be for safety. But I'm gonna come out from behind my chair just for a minute to show you what we're gonna do. Easier to move from behind, you got your chair there. We're gonna go step back. One, two, three. Step back. So you'll use your right foot behind your chair. Okay, and then your left foot. Keep going. One, two, three. Right foot. One, two, three. Left foot. One, two, three. Ole! Going nice and slow till our brain and our body are coordinated. Perhaps one more time on the right and then one more on the left. Now up to tempo, ready? Ole, cha cha cha. Sink down a little bit. Keep your body nice and supported with a brace in your abdominals. Strong core. But breathing, of course. You could think after you. Oh, but no, after you, my dear. You can keep your head forward, or if you need or want an extra balance challenge, you can kind of track your fingers. And that makes it a little bit harder, so make sure you don't wander away from your chair. Maybe tap it with your fingers. See it in your peripheral vision. Good. If your balance is rock steady, you can open both arms and close. Oh, that feels good. I hope it feels good to you. If it doesn't, just change it up a little bit. Make it smaller. Or slower. It's up to you. Four more. Each side. Three more. Two more. Let's take the arms out. Last time. And then we're going to make it double time. Ready? This one's harder because you've got to alter your body. So place your feet just a little bit turned out so you don't wrench your knee. Or just step it straight back. Just a few more. If it feels good, you can just tap it. You don't have to step it. Or you can step it. Four, three, two, phew. How are you doing? Got a number for me between one and 10? One would be like, bring it on, I can dance all night. 10 would be, I am ready to take it to, to my chair. Uh, so hopefully four to seven. We're gonna do one more pattern. Here on the left side of our chair. When we were on the right, we were taking our right foot forward and our left foot back. On the left here, left foot forward and lunging and one, two, three, right foot back. One, two, three, left forward, sinking. One, two, three, right back. Make sure you can touch your chair. We'll do it nice and slow, rehearsing at this tempo. One more time. And now, tempo if you like. Left forward, cha-cha-cha, right back. Okay, let's see if we can coordinate some arm movements. Now you can always keep your right hand on your chair if you need. Touching it occasionally is reassuring for me. I don't know about you, but make sure you can use it when you need it. Because we never know when we're going to need a balance check. It just sort of sneaks up on you. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can get these arms moving. We're going to push out 
and up. Out and up. You could keep one hand on the chair if you need that. That's fine. Let's do one more at tempo. Now, ready for speed? Forward, back, out, up, out, up, out, up. How are you doing? It's good to get our circulation going, get that fresh oxygen to your brain, move your muscles. We are designed to move. And the more we do at a gentle pace regularly, the easier it gets. It's a wonderful system. Of course, as I said earlier, some days are better than others. <laughs> Wish we could bottle those up, don't you? <laughs> okay, how about four more? Three more. Two more. One more. Yes. All right. Hey, this would be a great time if you're standing to get a little calf stretch in. So, walk that right foot back. Get it your heel, place it on the ground. Toe pointed straight ahead and keep that. Did I say right leg? I meant your left. Either way, because we're going to do the other one right afterwards. Leaning forward. Ah, that feels good. Creating a little stretch on the calf and the Achilles tendon and the bottom of the foot or the plantar fascia. Ease out of that and ease that other foot back. Place that heel on the ground. Straighten the knee without locking it, please. That's uncomfortable at best, harmful at worst. Our exercise benefits should always outweigh the risks. Right? Right. Time to transition to our strength. And our best strength exercise is our body weight squats. So, Please, get your feet right up snug to your chair. So you should never use a chair with wheels, or one that scoots out away from you. And you can even experiment with your feet a little wider, touching the outsides of the chair. But don't let your knees knock together as you hinge your hips back. Keep your head and chest up. And if you want to make it harder, cross your hands over your chest. Really stretch your tail feathers back there. And dig in with your hips squeezing forward and your feet driving down and your knees pushing back to really get your rear in gear. Most of us uh, rely on our fronts of our thighs, our quadriceps, more than the backs. So it's good to create a strong posterior chain. It's also good to get a drink of water. So as you do, Please support your spine, stepping to the side, leaning to the side. Here's to a, a strong posterior chain. Okay, I'm going to turn that music down a titch you in. And you can gather up your rubber tubing, please. We're going to be using that. Let's see where we are as I grab my tube. By the way, if you don't have a rubber tubing, you can do these movements with just no uh, resistance. You can imagine resistance and think of the muscles we're strengthening and you will get benefit from that as well. All right, where are we here? Oh, wonderful. Okay. So, sitting at the front edge of your chair, actually, let's scoot your hips back in case you want to do some more squatting. Yes, some of us do want to do more. Some of us don't. And you know you. You have choices. Use them. Grab your tube handles. Lay that tube on your lap. We're going to do an upper body lat pull down. So think, imagine yourself a live agile, strong kid on the playground and you're on the jungle gym 
And you're going to grab those bars and you're going to pull your chin up and do a chin up. Yes, probably most of you could do that when you were a child. Honestly, I can't still do it. It's a goal of mine. I might not ever get there, but I'll have fun trying. So we're pulling that tube apart, squeezing our shoulder blades together, strengthening the upper back, the latissimus dorsi. That's why it's called a lat pull down. Our biceps and our shoulders are also getting strengthened, as well as our grip. And grip strength is highly correlated with longevity and independence in your home. Breathing the whole time. Okay, now, dig your heels in. Don't put any slack on your tube. See how it feels to begin to pretend to get up. And if that felt good, go ahead and get up. Stretch your hips back and down. If you want to do a few more squats, you have a choice to say no thank you. And then you have a choice to add our lap pull downs, reaching for the ceiling where it meets the wall ahead of you and squeezing those shoulder blades together as you drive your hips forward. Reaching the hips back as your hands come up, breathe. How many of these should we do? I'm gonna go for eight. You can go for however many feel good to you that make you feel like, okay, I have reached momentary muscular fatigue and I feel like I can't do any more. I've got about four more. Weight is equal in both strong legs. Pulling and squeezing a lemon between those shoulder blades. One more. Woo! I reached that point of mus momentary muscular fatigue. Okay, now scoot your hips to the front of your chair. We're going to work on the front of the body instead of the back. With that band behind our upper back, under the arm hits. Holding the handles, push, lengthening your arms. If there's not much resistance, you can grab that tube closer to your shoulder, put like the shoulder point, and see how it feels to push. Now, we're gonna pull that navel in, and we're gonna just push our right hand as we turn our torso toward the left. And then opposite. So we're doing a core rotation, pulling the, the belly button in toward the spine and breathing, strengthening the chest, shoulder, and tricep, as well as the obliques. If you want, you can stretch that leg out, seated. If you're feeling fine, you could stretch that leg out standing. Adding a little bit more energy to the movement. Take a break with the arms whenever you want, or you could add both. Moving at your own pace, doing your best, perhaps just four more of these double arm pushes or single arm up to you. Make sure you've got your feet touching your chair before you get your body back down in it. Okay, loosen up the tension on that. Take it off, and we're going to do another exercise. At the front edge of our chair, put your feet, both of them, over the band so that you've got equal length on either side, and crisscross your tubing. So you got a letter X on the fronts of your shins. We're going to do the upper back again, but at a different angle. Keeping our hands close to our abdomen. See how it feels to inhale? Sliding the hands up, thumbs are reaching close to the collarbones, elbows are opening back, almost as if you yawn to greet the day. Breathe, use your safe, comfortable range of motion, smaller if that's what suits you. If you want more attention, you could push your feet out, keep those heels down so the band doesn't smack you on the back of your thighs. So this is an upright row for the rear shoulders, medial shoulders, biceps, and upper back. If you want, leave your hands down to your abdomen, tuck your tailbone under, lean back, and feel 
feel the abdominal, rectus abdominis muscles tighten, sliding back, pulling up, keeping that navel tucked in as if you were zipping up your tightest trousers but breathing. See how it feels to add back your upright row. Elbows coming up as your body reaches near sitting tall, but keeping tension on that abdominal area. That's our target. You can do just one of these or the other. And I'm going to show you one more option. Let's just break it down to our hip abduction. Right. Body straight and tall and left. You can do that solo, sliding the foot along the floor, keeping the body strong and tall. Or you could do that with your upright rows. Breathing, yes, breathing is important. It's mandatory indeed. Holding your breath can be counterproductive at best, um, harmful at worst. Okay, you could also add back your ab slides. Woo, whole body workout. Just about four more. If you're not already at momentary muscular fatigue, I am getting there soon. Breathing, woo. Okay, one more exercise. Don't step off of your tubing yet. We're gonna flip our palms up. Draw our elbows to our rib cage. Put some width behind between your feet. Lift your toes and tap your toes out and in. This is an ankle eversion. And you can put more uh, distance between your feet. Keep those heels down tight to the floor. You might not feel this because ankles are really strong. Then you can add a bicep curl if you like, but keep those heels down. Or that band's gonna come up and smack the back side of your thighs. Nice tall torso, breathe. You can do the ankle eversions solo. You can do the bicep curls solo. You can do them together. Or you can do neither. We got a lot out of that tubing, didn't we? Time to hang it up, get a little sip of water. So take your time, be mindful. Stepping to the side, bracing, arm and belly. And we'll stay hydrated. It's an ongoing process. So sip a little as you go. Maybe eight ounces, six to eight ounces before you begin, six to eight ounces during, and six to eight ounces immediately after is a good measure of thumb, rule of thumb. All right, time for another pattern. You can call this one a mambo, you can call it a rock step, but whatever you call it, do it at your own pace safely. I'm gonna demonstrate in my chair, but if you know you wanna be on your feet, take your time, be mindful, and come on over here to the right side, por favor. If you're in your chair, sit tall, maybe scooch over a little to the right, Step forward and back, out, and back, back, and out, side. Rock it forward and back, side and back, back together. Okay, got it? I hope so. If you're moving in your chair, stay there. If you want to transition to your feet like I'm about to do, do it at your own pace. Keep going forward together, side together, back together, side together. Rock step. As you rock step, sink down into your stance a little if you want more. Remember, you should be able to touch and see your chair at all times. Hmm, I think I messed that pattern up. Okay, so this is a tempo once more. Around we go. When we get back to the front, we're going to go double time. So fast speed. Here we go. Agility. Front, side, back, side. Can
can you say it with me? I can't hear you. Front, side, back, side. Good. All right. That's in ones. One each way, yeah? March it out. On your right. On your right. Good. Let's take it over to the left and do the same thing. Make sure your area is free and clear of stuff. Your ball might have rolled around or whatever. Cat, dog might have gone under your feet. Watch out for those little critters. It's good to have them in your home for the love and companionship. But also, they are a major cause of falls, so you got to watch out. Be mindful. Keep them in your eyesight, just like your chair. Or put a bell on them. <laughs> okay, get that. Left foot, left foot, marching. Best posture. All right. Rock it forward with the left and side. Back. Excellent. Now, each time we're stepping, we're not just tippy-tappy tapping our toes. We're really putting our foot down. Excellent. When we get back to the front, if you want, we're going to do double time. Fast feet, forward and side and back, side. How you doing? Pick those feet up each time, best posture. Breathe. Four more times around if you can. Three more. Two. And last time around, bring it to your nice march. How are you doing on our scale of 1 to 10 intensity wise? Happy medium? 4, 5, 6? I hope so. If you're a 7 or 8, you might feel, I don't know if I can continue at this pace. That's okay, make it smaller. Or sit down when you need a break. Do your best and then rest. On the right side again, right foot, right foot. This time we're going to do two rock steps in each of those directions. Think of it as a clock. And take your right foot, step on 12 o'clock again, 12 o'clock. How about 3 o'clock again, 6, 6 o'clock. You got it, 3, just a different thought, and 12. Good, what's this? Which o'clock? Good, and 6 o'clock. Okay, two more at three, and when we get back up to 12 o'clock, double time, two here, forward and forward, side and side, back and back, or use your clock, 12, 12, three, three, six, six, let's try it again, shall we? 12, 12, six, oh, three, six, <laughs> three, and march it up, how you doing? Hopefully you got, you were better with your telling of time than I was. Let's try it over here. But this time let's use points on a compass. Let's get our left foot marching. So let's say forward is north. And this way is west. And that way, of course, is south. Are you with me? We're going to go, do two rock steps to the north, 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 and then to the west, and south. And hopefully I've translated that mirror-wise to your camera. Good. One more time around the compass rows at this tempo. West. Go west, young lad, young lass. South. Mm. When we get to north, we're going to go faster, if you please. North, north, west, west, south, south, west. Again, north. Does this make sense to you? Are you able to say it while you're moving your feet fast? Because moving and thinking and moving in patterns and talking together are kind of like multitasking, but only in this safe format. And studies show that this helps our neuroplasticity, forming new and more rich and better connections in our brain. 
Just march it out. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Let's try it one more time in fours. All right. I quite cut, run out of them. Um, oh, let's try the seasons. This time, we're going to run through the seasons forward as we rock step front. Winter is first in the year. Spring, summer, fall to the side. Winter, spring, you say summer, fall, back, winter. Say it all out. Are you saying it? Summer, fall. Good. Winter, spring, summer. Are you ready to speed the year up? <laughs> Forward, winter, spring, summer, fall, winter, spring, summer. I'm going to throw you a curveball when we come back around and decide. Say it backwards. Uh oh, fall, summer, spring, winter, fall, summer, spring, winter. One more time. Are you saying it? And fall, summer, spring, winter. Last time. Woo, I'm starting to sweat. It feels like summer. <laughs> are you ready? Are you, are you with me? We're going to do this one more time. Let's think of something else that comes in fours. Oh, how about the suits of a card game? Remember when we all used to get together and play cards? Well, if you're vaccinated, fully vaccinated, and two weeks more are out, and so are your friends, you can get together in groups of four or even six. Have a nice dinner and a game of cards, or whatever else floats your boat. All right, safe. Next to your chair, let's play cards. Let's see, what's the order of the... I'm not a bridge player, but I think uh, uh, spades is the, be the best, and then hearts, diamonds, clubs, let's just say it is. We're going to step on spades, hearts, diamonds, clubs, side, spades, hearts, diamonds, clubs, back. All of you who are bridge players, I apologize if I got that wrong. Diamonds. Clubs to the side. Last time at tempo. Hearts. Diamonds. Now fast beat. Here we go. Spades. Hearts. Diamonds. Clubs. Running. Hearts. Diamonds. Clubs. Spades. Hearts. Diamonds. Clubs. There you go. Now we're going to reverse it. Lowest one first, clubs, diamonds, hearts, spades, diamonds, oh, diamonds, hearts, spades, clubs, diamonds, hearts, spades, one more time. Can you say it? Are we there yet? Oh, my calves feel a little tight from all that quick steps. Do your calves feel tight? If so, let's give them a stretch before we get seated. So, I'm going to turn to the side so you can see what I'm doing. Reaching that leg back, knee straight, leaning forward. Breathing. Maybe leaning back, bending that knee a wee bit. But keeping the heel on the ground to stretch the slightly tighter calf muscle or a different calf muscle in the soleus. Other side, I'm just moving my body so you might be able to see better. Heel on the ground, leaning forward, giving it a moment, breathing, catching our breath, shifting our weight so that we can bend the knee ever so slightly and still push the heel toward the ground. And you might not feel the difference between those two stretches, but either way, whether you feel it or you don't, it's going to be beneficial so long as it doesn't hurt. Time for another strength interval. Take your heels in. Get them close to your chair. Remember, you can be on the inside of your chair or the outside. Today, I'm going to try the outside. But don't let your knees knock. Woo! That's hard on the knees. 
get your hips hinging back, keep your chin up, and just hover if you like. And then drive your hips forward and squeeze your cheeks. You could do one and just get seated, or you could do ten. You get to choose, but do them mindfully and feel your hips. There's a beautiful cat by my door peeking in. <laughs> All right, get, up, get in your chair when you're ready. Be mindful, step to the side, lean to the side, get a sip of water. Whew, I was cold when I got started, but my body is generating heat and I'm sweating. Different people sweat differently, but if you never sweat, that could be a sign that you're dehydrated or something isn't working. Now, there are rare conditions where folks never sweat, but you probably already know if you're one of those. But sweating is not an indication of whether your workout is great or not. It's just your body thermal regulating. And you must stay hydrated for that to work properly. I've said it a number of times, but since we're getting into gardening season and more outdoors, thank you, because that's a nice safe place to visit with folks. Walking and talking with a friend about things that might be heavy on your heart or things that are lifting your spirits high. Walking and talking with a friend is a really super good activity that research shows is good for our heart, lungs, balance, uh, our leg strength, and our cognitive abilities, and our emotional, mental well -being. So make a date with your buddy and get out there whenever it's nice. Just be mindful each step. And if you feel wobbly, get yourself some good, sturdy trekking or walking poles. If you don't have any, call me. I got about eight sets. Okay, we'll need our ball. We got stuff to do. Let's go, people. Sitting at the edge of our chair. I'm gonna sit back so you can see better. Good. Ball between your knees. Working on our inner thighs now. Feet a little closer than knees. Bottom perched at the edge of your seat. Sit tall and squeeze the air out of the ball. Exhale as you do that. Good. Dig your heels down into the floor and feel those hamstrings, backs of your thighs. Strengthening and tightening. Breathe. Pull your toes up and feel the shins, the fronts of your lower legs, strengthening as you pull your toes up. This will help prevent foot drop while you're walking and talking with your friend because you're not allowed to fall. <laughs> it happens to the best of us, but if you're mindful, watching where you're going, you reduce your risk of falls. And if you use poles and you practice safely, learn how to use those a little at a time, you'll reduce your risk of falls and involve your upper body a little bit more and get a little more calorie burn while being more stable and using better posture. I think I need to have my pole walking class again. <laughs> All right, now, how are your thighs feeling? If they're done, you have an option of letting them rest or you could take the palms of your hands and push into the chair, feeling the shoulders and the triceps tighten and strengthen. There's muscles in your chest that push down also, strengthening those. Oh, our music is slowing down. So that's a cue to me that we all need to do the same. Do your best and maybe end with a glute bridge, lifting your hips breathing, pulling your navel in, squeezing your glutes tight, breathing while you hold this isometric pose and then rest your hips back down in your chair. <sighs> okay, inner thighs got worked out, triceps got worked out, hips got worked out, legs, let's work on our core a little more. Front edge of your chair, hold your ball out and we'll add some grip strength to this if you please. Remember, if your thumbs are painful or arthritic, you don't need to oppose. You could just squeeze with four fingers. Stay in your seat, please. 
you could just squeeze like that. Oh, look at that cute little outdoor scene. It looks like May in Ohio. <laughs> now, if your thumbs don't hurt, you can pose with them and squeeze. Either way, at the edge of your chair, pull your navel in, feet ahead of your knees, sticking on the floor, lean back, pull the navel in. As you sit up, breathe out, squeeze the air out of the ball. Inhale, open your fingers. Remember, you have an option of doing the grip strength without these abdominal strengtheners, pulling the navel in tight toward the spine, or just do one or the other or combine them. If you want to make them harder, you could raise the ball up as your body goes back, but keep those heels stuck to the floor. Don't let them pop up. Be mindful and really feel the abdominal wall pulling tight towards your body. Our, our core muscles that wrap around our torso protect our soft inner organs as well as help with our balance and our gait while we move and they help us to breathe. So of course we want them strong. Excellent. If you want to finish off with one knee tap and push into that knee and the other. Likewise. One more time. Woo. Okay. And while we're at our core strength, let's work on the sides. Widest stance, tucking them all under. Shoulder down, hand at the opposite way. Squeeze the ball toward the ribs. Exhaling. If you want strengthening the obliques or the side lateral flexing muscles, go through your safe, full, comfortable range of motion in this frontal plane. So imagine a sheet in front of you or a curtain and don't disturb it with your nose. Don't lean forward. If you want to make it harder, you can lift the elbow and really squeeze that elbow, strengthening the shoulder girdle of that right arm. Maybe just two more on this side. Oh, I felt that. Those shoulder stabilizers help stabilize the shoulder, by golly. <laughs> Keeping it in its socket so that it does it, it's at less risk to come out and be dislocated separate it should you fall. So mindfully pull that navel in and if you like tilt to the left. Breathe. Just working in this side to side or frontal plane. Focusing on those side muscles. Maybe elbow up if you want more resistance. Just four more. Three more, going at your own pace, choosing how many you like to do. Oh, right, wow. Well, we got a lot of different exercises We're done with our ball, so I'm gonna try to get it over there. Stay. Um, good time to get another sip of water as we transition to one of lengthening of our muscles. Strengthening is a contraction or a shortening, so the best thing to do afterward is add a little yin to our yang and lengthen those muscles. Here's to balance, whether it's on our feet or in our diets or in our bodies, here's the better balance. feel better after I exercise and that's a good indication that you didn't work too hard uh, but working even at a light intensity of two three or four on that scale of one to ten is really good especially if you do it regularly but we can easily overdo particularly this time of year so be mindful in your garden take it slow take frequent breaks stay hydrated keep your head your skin covered if you're in the middle of the day Better yet, do it a little in the morning, a little in the afternoon, and slip, slap, slop, as the American Cancer Society says. 
slip on a light colored long sleeve shirt for if it's not too hot or slap on some sunscreen oh slap on some sunscreen and slap on a hat <laughs> wide brim all right and protect your eyes with some uv protective uh sunglasses it will really do your eyes a favor so all right blah 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 so many lectures let's just see if we could lengthen those muscles we just strengthened sitting at the edge of your seat is a good place to start paying attention to your heart and lungs take a few mindful breaths breathing in through your nose if you can filling your lungs from the bottom to the top like a wave of effortless energy and then exhale as if you're blowing through a small straw effortlessly or you can exhale through your nose either way be mindful and just take two three more inhale exhales relaxing your abdomen now not bracing and letting it expand where your lungs are below the ribs through the ribs and then finally up into your chest cavity and then exhale conversely naturally your lungs will deflate and your abdominal muscles and your diaphragm will help them to do that if you're relaxed if we get anxious we tend to breathe shallowly and fast and that stimulates cortisol and stress hormones and adrenaline and that's not so good for us when we don't need it. It's there for a good reason, but it's also good to practice relaxation. So let's do that mindful breathing while we stretch a bit. The ones we did in the beginning, stretching our hamstring. Inhale tall, lengthen the torso and take a bow. Remember, you can rest your hand down now, but keep the chin above the level of the heart and support on that left lap. If you could reach your kneecap or your shin or your ankle or your toes, very good for you. Lift the toes up, whether you could touch them or not. You could use an old tie or a sash that you don't care much about and wrap it around the bottom of your ball of your foot to dorsiflex the toe if you can't reach it. Sit tall and let's try the left leg. Supporting here on the right lap. Inhale up, filling those lungs, keeping the spine long, supporting with our right arm on the lap and letting the arm come down, but kind of sticking your nose forward and your tailbone back and your toes up will allow this stretch to develop naturally, pain-free. Couple more deep breaths. Dorsiflexing the toes closer to your nose. Grabbing your toes if it doesn't hurt, but don't do anything forceful or jerky. It will actually counteract the stretching response of our body and may even pull or slight tear on muscles. We don't want that. And let's get the fronts of our thighs and hips. We just got the back. And I apologize again, I didn't save enough time for, for our stretching and or relaxation. That's why I have to assign you some homework. Five minutes once or twice a day to just limber up and inhale letting that knee, that left knee, go down towards the ground, fingers up. Exhale towards your chair. Yeah, but to be specific, your homework is mindful, relaxed breathing while thinking of nothing else. Five minutes per day, maybe once or twice. Ah, that's a great total body hip flexor, quadricep, side of the torso stretch. And we'll finish off with it the other way. 
So it helps if your right hip is a little off of the edge of that chair and you can hinge forward to very slowly guide that right foot back. Relaxing that leg like a sack of potatoes, letting the knee go down toward the ground. Relaxing the foot. Inhaling, opening our spine up, up, up. A little arch if it feels good or straight up. And remember, if the shoulder aches while extending, bring it in. You don't have to lengthen your arm to lean toward your chair back and stretch through this right side of your body. But if you can, use it or lose it. All right, well, that was fun. I hope you enjoyed our exercise session today. Drink plenty of water and um, enjoy your beautiful, wonderful parks that we have here locally in Yall Springs. I love the Glen Helen and I support them as much as I can. I love all of our little parks and I hope I see you out and about wearing your mask still, even if you are fully vaccinated. And if we're both fully vaccinated after we greet each other, we can say, hi, how about you? Me too. Okay. And then if we're in small groups, we can take it off and have a chat or a walkie talkie. <laughs> Until then, keep it safe and simple. Bye for now.